So I said to my secretary at that time, Dana, and I said, uh, could you schedule at least three hours next week at the Department of Motor Vehicles? Because that's about how long it takes them to beat you up. And um, so I went over there, and I walked in the front door, and I knew something had happened. Because this woman charged me, and she said, Welcome to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Do you speak English or Spanish? I said English. She said, right over there. The guy behind the desk said, Welcome to the Department of Motor Vehicles. How may I help you? It took me nine minutes to renew my license, including taking my picture. So I said to this woman taking my picture, What are you all smoking here? (laughs) You know, I mean, this is an apartment I used to know and love. Uh, And she said, Haven't you met the new director? It's always a leader. It's always a leader. It's always a leader. And I said, where is this new director? And they had these, uh, you know, kind of shelves or not, you know, whatever, counters in the front and then counters going down the side. They welcomed you here. You took your pictures down here. Out behind the counters, no privacy at all is the desk. She said, there's the new director. No private office, no nothing. So I went out to meet this guy. And I said, what's your job as the director of the Department of Motor Vehicles? Write this down or put it on your forehead. It's a wonderful definition of a manager. He said, my job is to reorganize the department on a moment-to-moment basis depending on citizen need. You know what he had done? He had cross-trained everybody in everybody's job so everybody could take pictures, everybody could run the front desk, including secretaries and bookkeepers in the back of the house who if there was a run-on by citizens, he said, that's not mission critical. Get out here, the citizens out here. Nobody could go to lunch between 11.30 and 2. Why? That's when the citizens are free. And so this guy is really amazing. Now, just to show you how amazing it is, shortly after this, my secretary turned 50, and she decided that she was going to get one of those mopeds or one of those scooter deals, and she's going to bop around Southern California. So she gets this beauty, and she never even thought about a license. You know, she thought car license, you know, moped, you know. No, you've got to get a license. So she goes over to the Department of Motor Vehicles. She gives her name to this woman behind the counter. She said, uh, she looks at it, and Dana had never had a ticket in not one mark on her whole license. And this woman said, that's incredible, your record. And she said, I'm looking at it, though. In three months, you're supposed to come back to take your written uh, driver's license again. Why don't you take both tests today? Dana said, test? I didn't know I was supposed to take a test. And she's panicked. I don't know if they were teaching these people human relations, but this woman reached across the counter, patted her hand. Oh, Dana, with your driving record, I'm sure you can pass this test. And besides, if you don't, you can always come back. So I want to tell you one of the interesting things before I tell you what happened, is I recognize some of the people in this place, and they were people who used to beat citizens up, and now they're cheering them on. What do you think the difference is? Leadership. So you're telling me you can only give our guys 45 hours? That brings them to about there. Gentlemen, that's not acceptable. So, Gene, Gene, you got to talk about power here. Whoa, whoa, guys. Power is everything. Power is everything. 
Without it, they don't talk to us. They don't correct their trajectory. They don't turn the heat shield around. I, we got to turn everything off now. They're not going to make it to re-entry. What do you mean, everything? With everything on, the LEM draws 60 amps. At that rate, in 16 hours, the batteries are dead, not 45. And so's the crew. We got to get them down to 12 amps. How many? You can't run a vacuum cleaner on 12 amps, John. We got to turn off. We have to turn off the radars, cabin heater, instrument displays, the guidance computer, the whole smack. Whoa, guidance computer. Well, what if they need to do another burn? Gene, they won't even know which way they're pointing. The more time we talk down here, the more juice they waste up there. I've been looking at the data for the past hour. That's the deal. That's the deal. Okay, John. The minute we finish the burn, we'll power down the limb. All right. Now, in the meantime, we're going to have a frozen command module up there. In a couple days, we're going to have to power it up, use nothing but the re-entry batteries. Yeah, we've been tried before. Hell, we've never even simulated it before, Gene. Well, we're going to have to figure it out. I want people in our simulators, working re-entry scenarios. I want you guys to find every engineer who designed every switch, every circuit, every transistor, and every light bulb that's up there. Then I want you to talk to the guy in the assembly line who actually built the thing. Find out how to squeeze every amp out of both of these goddamn machines. I want this mark all the way back to Earth with time to spare. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch.